Hi everybody, I'm Mikey and this is part of the Advent Calendar series that is a crochet along. For those working on the crochet along with me, every few days a new video will be available to advance you to the next part of your project. There are 15 tutorials in all to complete today's project. If you're finding this and the crochet along is done, all videos will stay up indefinitely. In the more information of this video, you'll find a link to the playlist where all the tutorials will be listed in order for you to play along. The entire pattern is now available for free. For those who don't need a video, refer to the video description to get redirected to the pattern. So in the meantime, let's begin with today's tutorial to advance you to the next step and of course wishing you the very best of the festive season ahead. So this is part of a crochet along with me. So today is part one of 15 of creating this advent calendar from start to finish. Today's project we're going to be making the white backdrop that you see here. This is an oversized backdrop and you will see that it's really quite large once you get it done. So today's project in video number one is that we are going to finish the backdrop in order to get that done and then in the next tutorials ahead we'll continue along with making all the other components that you see. So this is video number one and let's just do a quick pattern review as we go. All of the different colors have been listed here. We're using Karen Simply Soft and you will see the off weight has three balls and all the other colors have one ball each in order to create all the whimsical colors. You can take a look here and it's really quite easy to be able to follow along on what balls that you need. You'll need a five millimeter size H crochet hook today. You'll also need a bit of stuffing as some of the characters here have a little bit of light stuffing inside and you'll also need 24 buttons because you will notice that these and decorations hang from there. So as the date goes on you put the decorations onto the tree and by the end of the advent of the day number 24 all of the decorations will move from the pocket up into decorating your tree. All the instructions here have the abbreviations that are used throughout today's pattern. This is an eight page pattern because everything that you see here is listed but don't look at it as eight pages. Look at it as step by step and it's not so bad. It's intermediate so therefore there are some things here especially within the decorations that are a little bit more complex than easy level so therefore the entire pattern gets listed as intermediate. So this is video number one. We're gonna concentrate on just the white backdrop. Everything else that you see on top of the white is not gonna be covered today. And we're gonna get this completely done. We're then going to go around with the light border and then we have two tabs. There's a dowel that is holding that into position and you can then hang that from a wall or a door, whatever you wish. So what we're gonna be doing today is the white backdrop, the edging and the tabs in order to complete. So without further ado, let's grab our off white yarn and let's grab our H size five millimeter crochet hook in order to begin. So behind the scenes I'm already working on this and I've got my backdrop already done. I have not done my edging yet or my tabs and I'll catch up with you in a bit on that. But I'm gonna show you how to get started with this first with showing you a small sample and then you can just follow the instructions in order to get to the large size sample that you see here on camera. So let's begin with the slip knot and we are going to put that onto the hook. And remember this is an intermediate level but if you follow along closely enough maybe a beginner like you could probably actually get started too. So you're gonna have to chain a total of 83. I'm not gonna do that here on camera because I've already got my sample done but you're just gonna make your chain. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. And you will chain all the way to 83 for me and then maybe back here and I'll show you what to do from that point. So once you have your 83 done, I want you to go second chain from the hook. So there's one and two, rotate it to get the back hump of the chain only and go in the back side. So it's just one strand in the back and you are going to single crochet and you're gonna single crochet in each of the back humps of the chain working your way across and you will have a total of your chain going all the way across. So just do that for this uh, row and then we'll start up the next row in just a moment. When you get to the end of your chain, you're just gonna stop and then you're gonna turn your work and then start. So every row now completing up to 37 inches for this is going to always be the same. You're gonna chain up one and then insert into the very one right underneath it and you're gonna single crochet yourself back across all the way to the other side. So you wanna make sure that uh, you're just paying attention to that. You will have a nice beautiful rectangle by the time you're done. You need a total uh, inches of 37 inches right from this base right up into the top. It'll take you several hours in order to get that completed and that's why this is being done as a crochet along so that you have time to get that done before moving on in the clues. So once you get to the very end, go right into the end one and then you turn your work and then start again. So just chain up one, going right into the first one again and single crochet yourself all the way across 
just like so. So please do this now until you get to 37 inches long and then once you get that done then you're gonna meet me back here and then we're gonna start the trim together and then we'll do also the borders at the, or the tabs at the top at the same time. So several hours ago I would have left you doing this so you did your 37 inches and I have my 37 inches done right from start to finish. So once you have that done you're just gonna fasten off this particular yarn. So we're just gonna trim it Okay, and then just pull through the loop and finish it. So what I would recommend is that you hide in any loose ends that you have right now. It just makes it a lot easier instead of waiting to the very end. Grab your darning needle, just like so, and feed that onto, feed the strand onto the needle, just like so. And to really hide it in, you want to glide it up underneath the stitches three times. So just don't impede the edge, just go right up underneath so you see it's not along the edge. Just going across once and just pull it snug but not too tight and then going back in the other direction again underneath the stitches. So two and go back one more time for three and then you can safely cut that out. Okay so now you've got that done I want you to do that to the other one on the other side. So right where you started it on this side here I want you to do the same with this one. Get that out of the way and then we'll be ready to move on to the next part of this project. So let's move on to the next part of the project. Using a robin's egg color if you're following exactly what you want to do is create a slip knot and insert that onto the hook. So you have a choice. Um, you can go along the edge or this edge. It doesn't matter. So when it's rows like this in a single crochet, each row equals the single crochet as you go along and then of course along the top edge you have that. So you're just gonna start in the top edge, okay, just like this and then fasten on, uh, chain one and single crochet. Okay, so you're just gonna go along that edge just single crocheting across and then what you're gonna do is that when you get to a corner you're always gonna do the same thing for this. So we only have to go around one time is that in the very corner one you wanna put in three single crochets and then continue along the edge. So let me get over to that point for you and I'll see you there in just a moment. Okay when you get to a corner like this the very last stitch is going to be three single crochets and that allows you to turn the corner. One, two and three and then you just continue down the side. So remember what I said already is that each row equals a single crochet. So just coming in the side here you're just gonna single crochet in the end of each of the rows going all the way down to the other side. So that's how you're gonna complete this round. So what are you gonna do at the next corner when you hit this? Three single crochets in, in that one and then you continue along the edge and etc. So what I'll do is I'll meet you at the end of this round. I'll show you how to finish this and then we'll carry on with making the tabs to bring today's tutorial to conclusion. So I'm coming all the way back around and right to where I had started. Remember that I started with one single crochet in the first stitch. So what do I need to finish this with? Well I need to finish off by putting two more into that same one. Okay to complete that corner. So one and two and then we slip stitch to the very beginning one and then that's it. We fasten off. So let's fasten that off. You want to hide in your loose ends just like I showed you before with the darning needle and then we're gonna begin to do the tabs next then to complete today's tutorial. So right now I have it going all the way around. So let's begin the next part with making the tabs. So right now we have the main backdrop done here and you can see it looks pretty fabulous and now we're gonna do the tabs. Now the tabs are along the top. There's two Okay, one and two right here. So what we're going to do is make rectangular strips on each side. Okay, so we're gonna do those separately and then we're gonna fold them over to create that loop where the dowel will go into and then we sew that directly to the top. So there will be one on this side and one on this side. Both of the tabs are exactly identical but I'm just gonna show you a miniature um, just to show you how to do that. You're gonna fold it over and then sew it to the top of here. When you go to sew you wanna make sure it's one inch then from the outside and then you're just gonna sew the rest of it and there should be a small gap here in the middle. This is where the dowel will be exposed so you can pin it to the wall or nail it to the wall or hang anything to and then you just go and add the next tab again one inch in. So just be very strategic with your sewing and you can also just because the dowel will be hanging out on both sides of here you can also have the dowel string coming up like this to be able to hang too. So this is a relatively long uh, calendar. You'll love it and let's get started on showing you how to do the tabs. So using the same color that you just did the border you want to create your tabs and the tabs are, are two of them so you'll have to do this twice. So you're gonna chain a total of 39. I'm not gonna do that here on camera because I'm just gonna show you samples. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine 
and 10 and you'll go all the way to 39 and then you'll start. So what you have to just do is go back and forth in the rows just single crochet. So second chain from the hook as we begin going into the back loop only. I want you just a single crochet back across your chain. So you're gonna do this like it was the backdrop just single crocheting back and forth until you get to two and a half inches in the height and then once you have that done you're going to then fold this over and you're gonna go into both sections so it creates that loop and then you're gonna sew that directly to your project where I just explained. That information is available on the pattern too if you need some more clarification. So you're just gonna continue just to go back and forth single crochet so you're at the end, turn your work, chain up one and single crochet until you get two and a half inches. So do that and I'll see you back here in just a moment. So once you get your two and a half inches high, obviously it will be longer because this is just a smaller sample. You wanna cut this string here so that you have enough to be able to sew it to the project. So you just wanna cut it and you are just going to feed it through like this. So you're gonna use that strand to sew it to the other project. So let's bring up back up the other project here right in the upper corner and remember I said it's about an inch. My finger is about an inch there. So I'm gonna start right about here and all I'm just gonna do is that I'm gonna take this large strand that I just cut and I'm gonna feed it onto my darning needle and I'm gonna go about one inch. My thumb is about one inch. I used to be an engineer at one point and they tell you to measure a body part <laughs> so you have what you know is an inch. So I know that for sure and then all I'm just gonna do is just pull it together here, okay? And what I want to do is just go to the other side. So just fold it over and then come through the other side of this project through the same spot and pull everything nice and tight. So what I wanna do is that when I go through this project, so I'm gonna go through the next stitch here and then I'm gonna go through the next one here, both layers at the same time and pull through. So this is a whip stitch, okay? And then go to advance to the next one here, next and next. And I wanna do that until everything matches up to, to each other as I'm going across. So go through both of those layers at the same time. So when you get to the end of this, you're just gonna fasten this um, strand off like you would have um, just finishing a project, go back and forth three times. And this tab here is creating a loop that you see that you can slide in the dowel. If you, have, uh, if you have other ways that you prefer to do this kind of method, you can do that. Um, I thought about actually crocheting this directly onto the project first and not actually doing a separate tab. But again, that's uh, I'm following the instructions as per the designer because usually they have a better idea on, on implementation than I do on some of this stuff. So once you have that done, okay, so I got everything in place, you wanna hide those loose ends. So just going back and forth a total of three times just underneath the stitches. So one and two and clearly yours will be much wider. You could do mini tabs like this too if you wanted to. It's up to you, it's your creativity. And if you go back and forth three times, you can cut it right down to the project, get rid of all your loose ends and therefore you have a little tab. So your tab will then be almost to the middle and then the new tab will then start in the middle going out to the other side. Again, it's about one inch off from the edge just like so and now I'll be able to put in a dowel and hang this uh, from the wall or from a door. So this is where I'm gonna leave you in this particular project so you have to join me next time as we advance our way through the advent calendar and getting our next steps. So, so the next step that we're gonna be doing is working on the Christmas tree. So I'll see you next time and have a great day.